What is up, MFers? Mixing it up today, doing something a little bit different. Haven't done an unboxing video for a hot minute, but I felt like the orders I got in warranted just that. We're not just doing any unboxing. We are doing maybe the highest dollar value of any unboxing I've ever done on my channel. And the reason I got all this beautiful fishing stuff that's in these boxes and them rods right back there, it's 2023, and as you guys know, we're fishing the entire Bassmaster Open schedule, all nine events. You might say, Ben, you got a bunch of stuff already for fishing. Why do you need new stuff? Well, who doesn't love new stuff? A lot of this stuff is uh, restocking baits that I use every single day. Some of it's a major upgrade, some of the reels and rods I'm using, uh, and some of them are just some things I wanted to try out and get some duplicates because it's a long season and I'm a little hard on stuff. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into, let's do this box right here, which is all my order from Baitworks, and I'll link everything down below. We have a Baitworks order, a Six Cents order, and a whole bunch of rods right back there. Let me get it out, get it organized, and let's go through it all. Boom. This is what we're starting with right here. We got all new reels. That's what all these are. We're not using only the new reels this year. We just got some extra reels because a lot of mine were getting pretty freaking dusty. And again, I wanted some upgrades. I got just that we got Daiwa's on this side shimano's on this side that's one thing i love i'm not sponsored by any particular real company i just get all my reels from right there at baitworks so i'm not gonna lie to you guys and tell you one brand's better than the other it's like a ford chevy debate always um, but i got different reels for different reasons here and i'll explain why and kind of go through what i got to make it easy i got two of each model of reel so these two, these two, these, 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 and these, those are all the same reel. So we have six different reels, two of each, quite simple. Let's start over here with the Daiwa Tatula Elite 100H. So this is a six, three to one gear ratio reel. Haven't ever used, or I guess I've only used the, uh, the Elite version of the Tatula a few times um, with buddies, but this is a slower reel, six speed. Very likely will either be cranking, um, probably some more heavy cranking. Nice, solid, 100 size reel. I love these Tatula reels because they palm extremely well. The T-wing's super nice. In my opinion, some guys don't like it. I freaking love it. Um, great casting. And um, this is just gonna be a rock solid, high quality reel for anything I'm winding. I don't like to usually wind with a seven speed or higher reel. So six speed, all my cranking, chatter baits, um, line through, stuff like that. That's where these two are gonna get the call. Next up, we're gonna stay right there with the old Tatula, slightly different SVTW103H. This is almost the exact same reel, but um, a little bit cheaper than the Elite version of the reel. A little bit heavier, a um, little bit more robust feeling. But those of you guys that watch my videos know I use this SVTW103, which is the six speed version of this um, for a ton of my cranking and line through stuff. I'm gonna use it for the exact same scenario as the previous Elite version that we just talked about. This thing is a workhorse. It's rock solid at the price point. I don't know if you can beat this reel. I've been so happy with mine. Over the last few years, I have done some damage to them probably need to uh, get those ones kind of lubed up and everything but once again this is a, a winding reel almost exactly like the elite but a little bit cheaper it's gonna be a good one get used a lot would it be sacrilege to do a shimano mixed in with it i think it would be let's do it all right this one over here we got two of these guys right here this might be my reel i'm most excited to really put through the ringer i've used zarks a uh, couple that he has but as you guys can see this is the bantam xg and you can probably see the price tag on there too that's a 350 dollars reel this some bitch is nice way too nice for me i'll probably catfish with it or something at some point i'm an idiot um, but yeah this is the bantam this thing is freaking beautiful um when i say robust i mean robust this is a 150 size reel it is not a light reel this is a heavy reel i got them both in the eight speed uh, version that's what the xg is what is the exact doesn't even freaking matter like i was just telling cole none of these gear ratios mean much because manufacturers generally uh, eight to one eight point one to one uh, manufacturers just it varies reel to reel how much line they bring in but 
This is eight speed reel. This is going to be a dragging um, or even like a top water uh, flipping swim jigging braid type reel for, for one of the two. Um, but I, I love these reels. They fit really, really well, especially if I like medium average size hands to smaller hands. Um, I'd say I probably got average to above average size, but they still palm really, really well uh, for me. Side plate, super nice for all the uh, the adjustments you guys can make. And I'll, I don't know what else to say. This is kind of a reel that you just need to feel in your hands to feel how sturdy and robust it really is. Me and Zark talk about that all the time. There's the trend in the market the last 10 to 15 years of companies trying to make reels lighter and lighter. And it seems like they get shittier and shittier the lighter they make them and the more carbon fiber and the, the less aluminum um, and, and metal that they use in the reels and the more they go towards that carbon, the less they hold up. This is like an old school battle wagon that's uh, gonna be some winching. Can't wait to use these two reels. Super smooth out the, out the package. I'm excited to get them dialed in, start dragging some baits. And like I said, I'm probably gonna spool one of those guys up with some heavier braid do some swim jigging, um, some top water stuff. Who knows, maybe even some uh, some shallow weedless swim bait type stuff with those reels. I hope I made everyone super, super butt hurt by uh, doing my Shimano right next to Dai. That might seem crazy, but there's probably people that are in their feelings about that right now. Let's go back to Daiwa, woo! Making people mad. This is the Tatua Elite 100XS. Once again, a very fast reel. This is the eight speed version, which I believe on the Baitworks site is listed as like the flipping and pitching model. Um, it's like a exclusive flip and pitch style reel, which is what I'm going to use this for. Once again, they might double for me as a top water reel since they're fast. They're gonna be rock solid. The anti reverse isn't gonna go out like a lot of the cheaper reels on the market. But with that T-wing system, I'm definitely gonna use this reel to, to flip docks, to skip docks, overhang, under, overhanging trees, stuff like that. Um, but once again, nothing too crazy about it. Just another nice, sturdy, um, reliable reel. Expensive, out of a lot of people's price range, but you need that to have just constant pressure on some of these fish flipping. I do a lot of my flipping with the Shimano Metanium now, uh, and then a lot with the, uh, the two, or, three or so Daiwa Tulas that I have, seven and eight speed. It is a workhorse reel once again, as all of these are, but they all should be. They're all expensive, nice reels, so they should be freaking workhorses. But again, uh, another eight speed reel. I, I want it, so I got four plus eight speed reels here, which I was kind of going away from um, to the point where I didn't have hardly any, so that's why I got a few. Let's go back over the Shimano side. Two of these guys, Corrado MG, uh, MGL 150HG. This is like, uh, you know, everyone talks about the old green Corrados. It's like the one of the most reliable reels of all time. This guy is the next up in that generation, generation, generation. Um, it's not a Japanese reel. It is uh, made in Malaysia, as it says right there on the back of it. Uh, but this is a solid, solid choice. Once again, another great all-around reel. And that's why I got it, seven four to one gear ratio. So I can do a ton of different things with this. I'll do about everything besides crank with this reel. That's why I love it. Uh, if you look at the open schedule or just my life schedule of how much I travel around, we go to a bunch of different types of fisheries. So having reels like this seven speed reel um, that's 150 size, I'm gonna be able to do most of the things by just re-spooling some line and putting it on a different rod. I like that a lot. That's one thing you're gonna notice about the rods and some of the baits and stuff that I got as well. They're multi-purpose, which is absolutely freaking key. This one feels, um, it's very similar, I think, to the Tatula Elite uh, 100H. I wouldn't say there's a ton of difference. It doesn't have the T-wing on it. Feels, I don't know, they just palm a little bit different. The Shimano's do than the Tatulas, uh, the Corrado's that is. And uh, again, gonna be getting used a whole lot. You guys will be seeing that all year long. Okay, that's it for the Shimano's. Let's go one more Daiwa over here before we get into some other things. Tatula 300 HS. These are the 300 size of the Daiwa Tatula. I have one of these already in a six speed. I love it for glide baits. I love it for the draw. It seems to be the perfect 
one turnaround cadence for going through the glides. And uh, this is the seven speed version of it. It's gonna be very, very similar. This is again, um, I think I might like the Shimano Tranks a little bit more, the 300 size. This is very comparable to that, but this reel just feels different in my hand to me than the Tranks. It palms different. It feels a little bit less robust and big and clunky, just a little bit than the, uh, the 300 Shimano. And so it's kind of in between like the 200 Tranks, the 300 Tranks. It's just something different. I like to mix it up. Um, I love the 300 Tranks and 200 Tranks. Not so much the 200, the 300 for sure. You guys see me use it every single video, um, but I use this almost every video as well for more of my three to five ounce glides and it's perfect. So I got two of those. Big baits are going to be a huge part of my season coming up. And this thing was even gonna get some, some use uh, at this Ufala tournament, I think with some big spinner baits too. I, I made some that are so big, I can't even throw them on regular reels. So <laughs> we're gonna need to have a specific mag spinner bait reel. But you know how it is. I'll probably just throw a jerk bait the whole tournament anyway. All right, that's all the reels. I was gonna do the rest of my bait works order, but since we did reels, I guess it would almost only make sense to kind of pair it up with rods. I'm not gonna take these out and show you the bends on them and everything because you guys understand. I did the exact same thing, I think, with my rods as I did with my reels, and I just got two of each on some of the, not all the models. I'm just confusing myself per the usual. Um, this one right here, I'm very excited for. I've actually, I used this the other day, but then I threw it back in the uh, bubble wrap so it would look like I'm unboxing it for the first time, Cole. But maybe, yeah, I'm just a big freaking liar. Oh, it was the other one. <laughs> we'll open that. Okay, I got two of these guys. This is the Six Sense ESP in the 7.3 Heavy version. Again, all around multi-purpose rod, but mostly this is going to be a dragging and pitching rod for me. Zark has had a couple of these and it's his favorite jig rod, um, favorite more sensitive, um, higher scale jig rod, a more expensive price point. And I would agree, man, this is absolutely killer. 7.3 in length, so tighter quarters it's good for, but it still has enough meat to the tip to where you can drag something casting a big three quarter ounce swing head or jig or Carolina rig even out in the distance. So I picked up two of this guy. That's gonna be a rod you guys see me use a whole lot moving forward. This is my favorite mag, whoa, we got rods going everywhere, I like it. This is my favorite Magnum swim bait rod um, that I throw my big, big glides on. And honestly, um, I might not even carry this on the boat since I already have one and I just, I got it so I had a backup in case I broke that one or something crazy happened, got stolen or something. 7-Eleven extra heavy in the Six Cents um, US series. This is what you've seen me catch all my, my hinkle fish on, my slide swimmer fish. I throw the draw on it quite a bit too. 7-Eleven extra heavy. I don't even know what else to say about it. You guys have seen me catch 14s on it and so many double digits. It's a freaking badass rod. It's made on a, uh, a North Fork blank and it's expensive and it's worth it. I just, I don't even know what else to say. I catch so many big bass on big baits with this rod right here. So I wanted to grab an extra one or in case I get on something where there's multiple, um, multiple guys that will eat. I picked up two of these. Uh, so next in the series, I got some Luxes. I actually put two of them in here, but this is the 7-2 extra heavy fast lux. This rod right here is one that I had a long time ago and I freaking I broke it on a, uh, a fish, which was great because I high sticked it like an idiot. But this rod is actually a very, very good all around rod. It doesn't really fish like an extra heavy to me. You can use it as a frog rod or something like that, but it's just really good um, for a swim jig rod. Uh, an underspin uh, rod, the flashy swim or the weedless swim bait. I'm gonna use it for a lot of different things and uh, it's gonna work great for that. Got two of these dudes, the seven five heavy fast lux. I think I've told you guys plenty about this rod. That's maybe my favorite rod out of all the rods Six Cents makes. I had one for the last five years and I've just freaking beat the crap out of it. 
<laughs> but I'm finally got some uh, some spares and some extras amazing dragon rod it's got power through the tip but it's a slower bend I feel like than most rods that size but big swim jig and heavy cover um, dragging Texas rig big worm big jig Carolina rig uh, once again a weedless swim bait with fluorocarbon I can do so many different things with this rod right here it's it's one of my favorites if not my favorite all-time six cents rod and then we got all these Millican series rods um, some of them are duplicates that I wanted to have with me and some I just used so much that I wanted multiple options to have the same bait tied on so we got seven five extra heavy fast two of these guys right here I swear that's what's in there you're not gonna even see them but we got a bunch of these Melican rods available. You guys should seriously check them out. I don't think there's a nicer rod on the market at the cheaper price point that it's at. You see me catch fish on it every day. This one is the 7.5 Extra Heavy Fast. I'm probably not gonna use it for any technique besides throwing a frog or a bigger topwater bait. There is not a better frog rod that you can use. I promise you that. Um, I, I've made videos about this rod specifically about me losing fish in my past on a frog not getting that hook penetration on the first hook set and this rod solves all those issues so if you're looking for a frog rod that's going to be your last frog rod you need that's the one right there got my main one got a backup got one on the boat i'm ready to rock got another one of no nope, got two more of these this is my jerk bait rod that first tournament you follow like i talked about I'm going to be using this a whole lot, 610, um, medium, moderate, and I don't use any other jerkbait rods. This has become my only jerkbait rod, and I've caught 10 pounders on it. I've caught thousands of fish on the one that I have right now. I wanted an extra one and a backup one. Again, you don't know what the hell is going to happen on the road, and that's a huge part of my forward-facing arsenal, obviously, is a jerkbait, so I want a lot of options there. Two of these guys, 7.4 Heavy Moderate of the Zark Series rod. You get Zark Series, Zark Special of the Millican Series right here. Another great all-around rod, Dragon Rod, Swim Jig Rod. That's why we called it the Zark Rod, because his favorite techniques are Swim Jig and um, Dragon. And it's perfect for those two. It even doubles as a topwater rod, um, a flashy swimmer rod. You can do so much flipping, pitching, skipping. It's great for every one of those techniques. And then I got two of these guys, the 7.7 seven Heavy Fast. I already have several of this rod, but I probably use it more than any rod in my Melican series because I throw the lion through on it. I flip with it. I throw the big spoon on it. I throw a Carolina rig on it. I pitch with it, I flip docks with it, heavy cover, like it does a lot of stuff with big heavy baits. And there's not hard, I don't think there's many rods in the market that you could use as a magnum spoon rod and as a flipping rod um, and as a big topwater rod. Like there's, I don't, I don't even know, like it, it's got the perfect bend to pitch a bait, yet it still loads up well enough that you can use it on the line through and really have a parabolic rod that bends with that treble hook bait. I use it with an A-Rig too. I probably use it more with my A-Rig than uh, the 7.9 swim bait rod, which will be back in stock soon. Boom, that's all the rods and reels. Uh, here is my line, which I'll get all of it from Baitworks. It's the least uh, impressive and exciting part and probably the most important part of my fishing that you guys see on a daily basis. And I don't really talk about the type of line I use that much. So really quick, let's touch on that. Uh, I got some Suffix 832. This is a great big rod braid. I got a bulk size of that stuff. That's like freaking cable right there you ain't breaking that stuff really good frog line weedless swim bait line uh punching line that's what i'll use that for also got some cigar smackdown braid uh, i got it in gray actually in 50 and 40 pound um, smaller top waters uh, i might even mess around with it a little bit on some of my uh weedless swim bait stuff so wanted to have plenty of that available uh, I throw a lot of my big swim baits on these two lines right here. I trust this one more, but it's way, way more expensive and harder to find in the 25 pound size than the Seaguar. So I use 25 pound Seaguar. I make sure to check my line all the time, my knots when I'm using this stuff, which seems kind of silly, but when you're using a five to seven ounce bait, it gets roughed up quite a bit, um, but the Gamma Edge is the most abrasion resistant, strongest line I've ever used. It's just very, very expensive, 
um, but 20 pound in that is going to be great for everything outside of my biggest swim baits, um, which I will use the 25 pound Seaguar, which the Abraze X is a little bit smoother of a line, um, feel wise to cast with and everything. I'll use this 20 pound Gamma Edge um, for flipping and dragging and stuff too, not just the swim bait stuff. And then bumping way down, I already have a bunch of uh, seven, 12 to 17 pounds. So got a couple more bulk spools of Invis X. That's what I do all of my, or most of all of my cranking on. Uh, jerk baits, I'll throw on 10 pound too. And then this is all I use for leader material these days, it seems like. Seaguar Gold Label, 10, eight, and six pound test. You guys constantly see me tying up leaders, and uh, this is as good a stuff as I think you can get um, without, I'm sure there's better stuff, but uh, it would take a long time for me to go buy a bunch of different Japanese fluorocarbons and try them all out. For now, I'm trusting what I'm used to, and uh, yeah, these are the lines that I use every day. Okay, here is my tackle from Sixth Sense, and as you guys will notice, it's meat and potato stuff, guys. This is the stuff where I'm like, this is what I use every day. I need to make sure I'm stocked up because it's very, very important that I have all of it in the boat. I got three different colors of whales. I got 10 of each of them. It's probably the only three whale colors that I use and I will really need. Here's the first one, baby sungill. It's a bluegill imitator. It's my favorite bluegill imitator in the whale series. Throw that guy on a flashy swimmer or on a regular key weighted hook. Next color in the whale, pro blue. That is a shad imitator or a crappie imitator. We've been on some dock bites before where I swear they were eating crappie and that guy looks just like them. And then I want something a little bit brighter. So there you guys go. Pearl white. Those are the only three colors I got in the whale. Why not? Uh, Father Zach put my stuff together here and he pretty much gave me a lifetime supply of uh, peg stoppers, the number one peg on the market. These are all 54 packs, so this should last me um, my entire life, which will be what, four or five more years? And then Cole can have them after that. He can stop all his, his weights from sliding around. Speaking of weights, let's get into some of my terminal tackle here. Got some big punching tungsten weights, ounce and a half, ounce and a quarter. Super exciting, they're, uh, they're weights, but these are badass weights. They're, they're not gonna cut your line on the inside and they're that nice matte black color that does not chip. So you're not gonna have flashy chipped off crap blasting through those mats. I uh, got a bunch of drop shot weights, um, half and 3 8 ounce, which I have been um, blowing out the hook keeper on and using as free rig weights as well. Once again, doesn't chip. I like the matte black, not shiny. And then a couple more terminal tackle guys. Three 32nd ounce nail weights, tungsten and lead. Those would be good in a lot of different stuff. You guys know how that is. Hover juggle, um, Nico rig. If I want to add a little bit of weight to a wacky rig, I can put one of these guys right in the center there where the hook goes in. So these guys are lots of packs of them. That's the terminals. Back to plastics, uh, 6.3 Divine Shaky Worm. I got in three different colors. We got, this is a, an awesome bait. I'll be using this once again a lot, the first one or two of the opens. Um, first color here, green pumpkin blue. Nothing crazy there. Got a case of those guys. I blast through them, I know I'll use them. Nice clean water color, natural color. And then I got cosmic black, which might be a good color for some of those eufaula fish, but anytime there's stained water, it's just a little bit different than your traditional black and blue. It's got some purple, red, gold, silver, a lot of different uh, cosmic colors in there. What's cosmic mean? It's a, it looks like the space. Uh, and then one last color, of course, if you're going in the south or really anywhere that uh, you have some tannic stained water, June bug, red, and the divine shaky worm. A lot of brush piles on you follow. I'll be throwing a lot of those in them as well. But this is gonna be my workhorses right here. We have jerk baits, Provoke 106X and Ghost Minnow. This is my favorite color that Sixth Sense makes and so I wanted to make sure I had plenty of them. You guys probably can't see that very well, but just a great all watercolor shad crappie, whatever, imitator, bait fish, imitator. I'll probably throw that color more than any of the other ones. Got the 106 Silent Pro Blue Scales. You guys have seen me 
been freaking railing them on that color lately. I've been using some with the scales, scraping the scales off on some of the other ones. Um, so people have been really confused about what to get. I'm taking it out. Cole's yelling at me. But a lot of people have been uh, confused about what color I'm using because they don't see it on the site. Well, I've take my Dremel and grind off, sand off the scales on some of these pro blue scales or some of our scales colors. It just gives it a dull, more natural appearance that is better for some of the pressured or, I don't know, it's just a more subdued color. Pro blue's always been a great color. Jerk baits and so that's what I like to do. That's the 106X Silent. Um, I also got the 106DD Silent in the pro blue scales and the 106 dd i got another pro blue scales in the 106 dd you guys have seen me catch 10 pounders on those lately why wouldn't i get more right <laughs> uh these guys here are last and not least yigs lots of yigs i got 10 of the uh it's called the green pumpkin blue crush basically a green pumpkin color these are all hybrid jigs by the way a great great all-around jig when i'm fishing this tournament coming up in particular at Eufaula. Lots of docks, lots of standing timber, lots of brush piles, lots of grass. This is a jig that I can leave tied on, probably my 7.3 heavy uh, ESP rod with a seven or eight speed reel, and I can fish it from the bank down to 20 feet of water in every type of cover. That's very, very valuable to have a jig on the deck that can do that. I keep it simple too. Pro blue, or not pro blue, God, uh, green pumpkin blue crush, which is a very, very simple green pumpkin blue color. That's half ounce. These are three quarter ounce of that exact same color. And then we got 10 of the half ounce and 10 of the three eighth ounce and this color called black light, which is basically a black and blue with some purple. And I don't like a lot of highlight colors for my black and blue because I feel like that's a color that uh, fish eat because it's a, uh, it's, I don't even know, it's a shade type color. It's a, uh, it gives, it casts a silhouette. Thank you, Cole. That's the word I was looking for in the water. Um, so I'll probably trim some of that purple out of there. And our six cents black and blue has a ton of blue in it, which I think is more to catch fishermen um, than it is to catch fish caught a bunch of fish on it. I just personally like a more, again, dull colored bait for those pressured fish. So I got a whole bunch of those. Um, this is a sneaky good jig. That's the half ounce size. I'll use that more for flipping, dragging, brush piling. And then if I get in a specific situation uh, where I am swim jigging, I really, really love this 3 8 ounce size. Again, I'll chop a bunch out of that put a stroker crawl or something on the back and just freaking beat that bank up, roll around, and hopefully stick some damn docks. Anyways, that's it guys, that's everything I got. Um, let me know if you have any questions about why I got into this tackle or really any questions about any of it, whether it be the baits, the reels, the rods, if you're looking for a specific rod or reel for a specific technique, Again, we have a ton of the Melican rods in stock. We're getting some more of the swim bait version of the Melican rod in stock, and they've been out of stock forever. A lot of these rods have, so it's good we finally have them. For those of you guys that travel around a lot and bank fish, we have the four-piece MF or series rod, um, a casting and a spinning version. So we got one to suit you guys there too. Thank you for you guys' support on all this. We got a crazy year coming up with the opens. And I cannot wait to take you guys along with me. You might even, I might even be there by the time you guys are watching this. I don't know, but I'm freaking jacked. Going to get my new boat uh, two days, two days from now. I'm jacked. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.